Hey guys, welcome to part two. As you can see, we're just jigging around. Just trying to get all the materials we can get for a proper uh, high capacity O2 tank. I think we've already got it actually. I think I just need to equip it <laughs> and then store my old one. Um, yeah, and once we're done that, we're gonna be looking for more blueprints for the Sea Glide, for the Sea Moth. Uh, the vehicle bay, so we can make the Seamoth that sort of deal. So right now we're just making our advanced electronic stuff and we're just going to store that in one of our lockers until we need it. Um, you need wiring kits for the Sea Glide and the Sea Moth I'm pretty sure. Oh look, you, you may not. I know you need a power cell so you need two batteries for that. But right now I'm just making all the advanced electronic stuff. I'm not going to use it just yet but I'm going to store them away for when I need them. So there we go, well, we have equipped our high capacity oxygen tank, which bumped our thing up from like 75 to like 135. So we'll be able to go deeper, and obviously when you go deeper you can get many more, uh, more rare ore, uh, which the ore tends to spawn in areas that are deeper, usually along shelves and cliff faces, that sort of deal. Um, they also spawn inside of caves and stuff, but also inside of caves, that's usually where you get your salt and that. Uh, and your quartz. Uh, you obviously don't need salt when you're playing on this mode. The salt is used for, I think it's like disinfectant or something. You use it to make, it's either water or bleach to make water, one or the other. Um, you can also use, I think it's bladderfish to make water, um, but yeah, <laughs> fuck playing on that mode, you will just end up eating thousands and thousands of fish, and it will, yeah, it'll ruin your experience, like, you, this game you make a lot more progress when you turn hunger and thirst off, and it's more about building the specific things, uh, it's much more enjoyable to play it that way. <laughs> Um, you've got like the, obviously the added survival element when you turn on hunger and thirst, but really it becomes you know an eating a ten thousand fish simulator once you turn on hunger and thirst, and it's yeah, it's not as enjoyable. The reactor will reach a supercritical state. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Right, 
So, that exploded and it turns uh, the water around that into, like, it makes the water around that irradiated. Um, in order to deal with the radiation, you need to get lead. Once you have lead, you can get some creep vine to get the mesh and you can basically make a radiation suit. Or you can wait until you get your sea moth. I think your sea moth uh, reduces your radiation. That sort of deal. But uh, yeah, and you can also get a radiation helmet, I think. Yeah, I might. you might make it at the same time as you make the radiation suit uh, with the blueprint. But you, you only need those when you're going to investigate around that area because that explosion was, yeah, <laughs> had some sort of nuclear energy to do with it. So the whole area around it is now irradiated. So you, as long as you have space, you gather creep vine immediately just when you slash it with your knife. So you don't need to worry about picking it up or anything like that. Right now I'm just looking for the lead. <laughs> A more organized person might, you know, name all their lockers, put them in a certain order, that sort of deal. I'm not that organized. <laughs> So there is our radiation suit for when we explore the aurora. We're only going to go over there once we get the sea moth or the uh, sea glide, one or the other. Otherwise it just takes too long to get over there and get back. Um, we'll probably wait for the sea moth to do that. But yeah, got our uh, radiation suit, so ready to go for there um, once we get all the blueprints for the sea moth.
integrating new PDA data. Okay, so you need the mobile vehicle bay in order to create the Seamoth, but you also need the Seamoth blueprint, so you need both of those. I think this game might have benefited from having um, more traditional shark design, honestly. Because these sort of goofy looking creatures, they make it sort of more Minecrafty and not like more cartoony. And they don't really play into that, you know, fear of deep water and fear of getting eaten by sharks as much. Because like that's a goofy looking fish and it's like close to like a barracuda or something than it is a shark. Um, would have also probably benefited from you know giant octopus creatures because those are your two main deep water fears, right? A getting ripped apart by a bloody shark. That's just a huge shark that just chews you out with like horrible serrated teeth. Or, or getting crushed and squeezed to death and drowned by an octopus that just grabs you and just drags you down into the deep sort of deal. Um, little bit of a miss, in my opinion, for this game to ignore both of those. Like, it, it has leviathans later on, but the leviathans don't really look shark-like. And, like, sure, they're aggressive and they can kill you quick and, like, they are pretty scary, but... Yeah, like, a more traditional shark design, I reckon, would have done this game, like, a huge service. It would have, it would have made the ocean horror elements much better. Right out, got our mobile vehicle bay. Now we just need the Seamoth blueprint. Sea glide's very good too. Uh, it's just like a little fan thing you hold in front of you, like a little um, <laughs> propulsion device, I guess you'd say. Um, it just lets you swim significantly faster and just get around significantly faster. Uh, it also has like a map on it and a light on it as well. So at that point you can probably get rid of your torch. Uh, you only really need your torch for uh, super dark caves and night time when you're trying to gather materials at night. Um, and if you've got the sea glide, you don't need it. Thank you. 
Uh, you can also min max your power cells by using your spent power cells to uh, spent batteries to create power cells. Um, yeah, I don't know how <laughs> much we're going to bother with that. Uh, when your power cells are out of batteries, you can eventually find a blueprint for a battery recharger. Or again, you can just, you know, use your spent batteries to create power cells and then the power cells will have full battery. I've got to say, it's probably the prettiest uh, underwater semi-horror game. It's more exploration than that, but once the leviathans and stuff do start appearing and you do start getting deeper, the threat of the ocean becomes more apparent and at that point it becomes significantly more horror focused. Um, until then it's just kind of, you know, a pretty underwater exploring game. <laughs> Uh, exploring slash survival slash crafting game but once the threat is there um, yes becomes significantly more horrifying righto this is the sea glide now that we've got the sea glide we can cover distances significantly better Uh, there is a like an, a, a world map but the world map is kind of useless because you're you spawn randomly in your escape pod um, on the world map so you will be in a different position every time you will not be able to you know locate your bearings easily every time like there's ways to do it when you're playing on computer this is on ps5 though um on computer you can locate the zero point for the map um and then you can leave all these little markers and shit around to uh map out the area so you have a rough uh reference point for where everything is where Nowhere near, we're, we're, like, I'm a fucking newbie to this game. <laughs> um, I'm nowhere fucking near that level of sophistication or preparation. Um, I'm not going to do that, very likely. I'm just fucking around for a couple of episodes. <laughs> I'm just adding it to my Ocean Horror series, that's all. Um, the game is like great, like especially night time when you're like swimming around at night. You don't quite know this early game that there are threats yet. Um, and the threats don't begin showing up for a while. But once they do, nighttime lowered visibility, um, in just in the extremely open ocean, uh, that's open in every direction, like <laughs> below, above, uh, to the left and the right. Uh, once you put a threat in that area that can ambush you from any of those directions, it becomes significantly more tense to gather 
materials. <laughs> um, yeah, like look, leviathans and that sort of thing eventually do start showing up. I think they're called reaper leviathans. I'm not 100% sure. Um, my first, I didn't even finish the game when I first played it. I played it until I got eaten by a leviathan and I thought, okay, that's cool. But now I've seen all this game has to offer. And I was also struggling with the crafting mechanics a bit. You kind of got to look up how to get all the different shit. <laughs> but um, yeah, once it shows up, that's the point of the game, I reckon. Um, that's when you've seen its best. But yeah, absolutely beautiful game. Um, when you go to different areas and different depths, the water becomes clearer and murkier depending on just like the vegetation in the water and that sort of shit. And fuck, it's just pretty. It's a very, very pretty game. <laughs> As you can see, Sea Glide gives you a ton of mobility.
new PDA data. your primary directive to swim closer to that beautiful creature. Swim close. Thirty seconds.
30 seconds.
DDA data. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and eventual death. seconds.
30 seconds. 